In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to do a complete C15 or 3406 valve adjustment, including jakes, injectors, and valves. I've been getting requests for several months for this video, and I finally made it. So, we have a C15 3406 overhead valve adjustment here. We're going to be doing this on a 6NZ. Um, I'm going to be talking about the differences in this video between the 6NZ or if you have a later model engine with the IVAs or sometimes they're called VVAs um, or if you have an SDP which is a little different as well. But pretty much all the single turbo C15s are the same. So if you're going to be doing your overhead it's good to know up front that the most technical thing to do on an engine is to run the overhead. There's a lot of little things to look for and it has to be done right or it can result in some fairly moderate engine damage. Um, so you want to do it right. I'm going to be showing you how to adjust the jakes, the injector height. I'm going to be talking about the injector height tool. I'm going to be showing you how to do the valves as well. Like I said this does not, this engine does not have IVAs but what you're going to learn in this video is how to adjust the IVAs anyways. Um, so hope you enjoy the video. So here's mostly the tools you're going to be using to do your overhead adjustment. You're going to need some wrenches. You're going to be using a torque wrench. You'll need a T-handle or a breaker bar for your adjusters. You'll need the appropriate feeler gauges, which this one we're going to be using a 15 thousandths, 30 thousandths, and a 33 thousandths and then your injector height tool. Now the wrenches will vary from model to model depending on what lock nuts we're using. So here's the injector height tool. You can see the cap part number there. And this is used for setting your injector height, which is critical on a C15. Now this tool is pretty expensive. If you get it from your dealer, it's gonna be 114 bucks. If you're a CAT employee, it'll be 76 or right around there. But uh, like check eBay or check for use one. So here's our engine. We're going to be talking about pinning it first, which involves this small plug on the rear flywheel housing. And in the flywheel, there's a hole that will tell you where TDC is. And the way it does that is you put pressure on a bolt. I'm using a uh, 5 16 bolt here. And I've drilled out the plug that comes out of the flywheel housing. And what you're going to do is you're going to put pressure on this bolt head until it pops in. When it pops in, that means your number one and number six are on TDC. Now, so it's popped in, so we're on TDC for one or six. Now the camshaft determines if you're on um, compression or exhaust stroke. That's what determines that. So after it's pinned, I like to do a little trick where I will mark the dampener and the block or the front structure actually with a mark and that's going to tell you that you are also at TDC. Now if you have your peanut cover off, this is your cam gear you're looking at, you can also see that we're on TDC. Now this will also tell you that you're on TDC for one, but you do not have to remove your peanut cover to do this. So you can see the white mark and then the small mark on the front structure. Now let's talk about these turning tools. So this is the turning tool I'm using from CAT. This is for turning the flywheel. This tool is also fairly expensive. Uh, you're looking at 129 bucks. There's the CAT part number. If you get it from your dealer, if you're a CAT employee, it's about 86 bucks. But like I said before, look for a used one on uh, you know eBay, somewhere like that. Now you can also turn the engine at the front. You'll need some sort of tool. You can make a tool that kind of looks like that, the one I'm holding. Or you could use like a pipe wrench or something. Um, and you can turn the front dampener if you have the marks already. So here we are looking at cylinder one. There's your intake, injector, exhaust. Intake, injector, exhaust. There's cylinder three, four, five, and six. So we're on the exhaust side of the engine. Now you'll notice all the nuts are loose. That's because when I do an overhead, I don't just check them. I loosen all the adjuster nuts and I set 
each one. So they're all uniform. So looking at number one here, you're going to do your intake exhaust intake on number two, exhaust on number three, intake on number four, and exhaust on number five. And we're on the number one compression stroke. Now let's say you rotate it 360 degrees and then you're on number six. Well then you do intake exhaust on six, intake on five, exhaust on four, intake on three, exhaust on two. So that's kind of the, the order we're gonna be doing those. Now they're both loose on one. All right, so we're on compression number one. We have to do injector number six, five, and three. Okay, so hopefully everything I've been telling you hasn't been too daunting as far as the order in which we're going to be doing the intake and exhaust valve. So if you haven't, if you didn't catch it, um, rewatch the previous part of the video. But we're on compression number one cylinder because the rocker arms are both loose on number one cylinder and because the camshaft is timed to the front structure. But usually you don't have the peanut cover off, so you don't know where the cam gear is. So you're pinned, you're at compression number one, you're going to do the intake and exhaust valves on one, intake on two, exhaust on three, intake on four, exhaust on five. You can also adjust the injectors for six, five, and three. Then you're going to rotate the engine 360 degrees, pin it again, and now you'll be on compression for number six cylinder. You'll know that because the intake and exhaust rocker arms for number six will be loose. So then you can adjust intake on six, exhaust on six, intake on five, exhaust on four, intake on three, exhaust on two. Now you'll notice that's all the valves you didn't do on the first rotation. So all your valves will be done at that point. You can also adjust the injectors on one, two, and four, which will take care of all the in injectors. So within two engine rotations, you'll have done the whole overhead. Now. I haven't mentioned the jakes yet because I'm going to show you a little bit further in the video how to do those properly. Um, but you're going to adjust those the same time that you're going to be adjusting the rocker arm that, they, uh, that they're over. Okay, now let's get on to the actual video. Okay, so we're back to looking at number one cylinder. We have your injector there, you have intake which is loose, which it should be, and your exhaust, which is also loose, or it should be. And you also have your Jake adjuster, which is on top. Now, always make sure that they're loose. If they're not loose, you got a problem. Um, either the rocker arm could be pinched or you could be on the wrong um, stroke. So what you're gonna need is your feeler gauge. You have a 15 thousandths. Remember, I've loosened all of the lock nuts, so your feeler gauge should be able to go under there uh, fairly easily. You're gonna run your feeler gauge under between the bridge and then the floating adjuster there. Then you're gonna get your T-handle or whatever you're driving that screw with. Sometimes it's a uh, an Allen wrench, sometimes it's a uh, flathead screwdriver. You're gonna just run it down finger tight with the adjuster and then move your feeler gauge. It should be a light drag. Once you're at a light drag, so we're at a light drag, you are going to hold your T-handle firmly, and then you're gonna tighten the nut. And these torque to about 25 foot-pounds, so try to get it just under that, you know, using your wrench, what you think to be 25 foot-pounds. After you've tightened it, you wanna move your feeler gauge again to verify that it hasn't tightened, or loosened in that case. And uh, if it's still a light drag after it's been tightened, then you're good to go. You, ha you can mark that adjuster as done. Now I go through after I'm done and torque them all. Um, so we're still a light drag, that's good. So now we're gonna move on to the exhaust. So here's our exhaust. Um, if this had IVAs, it would be over the intake valve, but this does not have IVAs. We're gonna talk about that later. So here we have your exhaust, it's a 30 thousandths. And you're gonna run that between the bridge and your floating adjuster there. And then you're gonna do the exact same thing you did with your intake valve. I like to loosen the nut a little bit more. 
Then what I do is I run it down, just finger tight for the adjuster. So it's finger tight, you should have a slight drag. And then you're going to tighten the adjuster nut. So we have a slight drag. So then what I'm gonna do with a slight drag is tighten the adjuster nut up to about you know 20 to 25 foot pounds so we want to run that nut down finger tight we're gonna pull our T handle off put the wrench on and we're gonna firmly hold our T handle and tighten the adjuster nut to about like I said about 20 to 25 foot pounds then we're gonna hit them with a torque wrench at the end so that is now tightened still a slight drag if it still has a slight drag then you are good to go. That one is adjusted. So after it's been adjusted, you're going to torque stripe it. Just making sure it's tight. And we're gonna mark it as the exhaust is done. Now, this is the point at which you will do your Jake adjuster. You adjust your Jake after you do your rocker arm adjuster for the for whatever cylinder you're on. So we're on number one. We just did the exhaust. Now we're gonna do the Jake. So you only do the Jakes on the same one as the rocker arm. We're gonna be using a, uh, this Jake setup calls for 33 thousandths. Um, so we're gonna be using a 33 thousandths feeler gauge. Now this one, Jakes are a little harder to do because unlike your rocker arm adjusters, you can't just spin the nut on. Um, it's under kind of a spring setup, so you kind of have to run it down until you get a slight drag. Um, a little bit harder. You'll see what I'm talking about when you go to do them. So the jakes are measured between that, that jake drive there on top of the rocker arm and the rocker arm itself. It's not between the bridge and the rocker arm. So once you get a slight drag, it's the same thing as doing the rocker arms. You get a slight drag, you're going to run that nut down, and then tighten it. These jakes call for about 25 foot-pounds of torque. Um, now some of the jakes are much smaller. They have a half-inch drive head. Those only torque to 11 foot-pounds. So if you're doing, I think the MXS and NXS, they have that style with the half inch they only torque to 11 foot pounds but this one so that's good slight drag it's tight and you're going to want to torque stripe the uh the jake there so number one's actually done other than the injector so now you would move on to your number two intake so you'd move your your feeler gauge from your number one to your number two intake. Now I'm not gonna go through each exact cylinder number because you already, if you know how to do one, you can do all six. So here's our injector height tool. We're gonna be doing the injector adjustment for number six. Okay, so do you see this small ledge here between the injector spring and the injector solenoid body? That is where the arm of the height tool sits. So it's very important that when you put this injector height tool on, that that arm sits on the ledge. If it's off the ledge, it'll throw off your injector height. So hopefully the armature will be about flush with the body of the height tool. So if you have your injector height tool, you'll notice there's a small ledge. Um, the center point of where the adjuster is supposed to be is the top ledge is supposed to be slightly over the body and then the bottom ledge is supposed to be slightly under. Um, but consistency is more important. So each injector you want to put at the exact same place. But what you want is slightly over on the top ledge, slightly below on the bottom ledge. I don't know why they didn't just do it flush, but they didn't. So same thing as your rocker arms. You, once it gets right, you're going to hold the adjuster tightly and then snug the bolt. And these torque to about 75 foot-pounds. So you're going to run it a lot tighter than you did on the rocker arms. So that one is set. We are slightly above on the top ledge, slightly below on the bottom ledge. And you're gonna torque stripe it the same way we did on your rocker arms. 
So that is number six injector. That is how you set the height. And that injector is done. So then you're gonna go to five injector and you're not gonna do four, you're gonna do three. So we have six, five, and three. After you rotate the engine, you're gonna do one, two, and four. And that'll take care of all six of your injectors. So we have not rotated the engine again yet, but we've done one intake exhaust and the jake. Now you'll do the injector on the next rotation for number one, and then that will all be done. So that is how you do all your adjustments for an overhead. All right, so hopefully that wasn't too overwhelming. Um, I'm not gonna show you doing each cylinder because a full overhead this video would be about two hours long because it would have to show me rotating the engine again, then moving to each additional cylinder. Since the settings are the same for each injector and each rocker arm, I don't have to show you each cylinder independently. You just have to know what order it is, which I already explained is the intake exhaust, intake exhaust, intake exhaust style. Um, hopefully, um, I was clear in the video as to what ones you're doing on which rotation. Um, now, after I do all the settings, then I go through at the end and torque all of them. So on this particular engine, I torqued the rocker arm, uh, which was the 916 lock nuts, to 25 foot-pounds. Um, the Jake adjuster nut gets torqued to 25 foot-pounds, and then the injector lock nut gets torqued to 75 foot-pounds as well. All right, so now let's talk about IVAs and VVAs. If you have a BXS, MXS, NXS, or SDP serial numbered engine, you're gonna have VVAs, or IVAs as they're also called. Those get adjusted the same way that the Jakes get adjusted. The IVAs sit over the intake rocker arms and they force the intake rocker arm open when the ECM wants it to open. It's supposed to reduce nitrous oxides. Well, those have to be adjusted the same time the intake valve are adjusted. So the same way you do your Jake, so you set your intake rocker arm to 15 thousandths, remove the feeler gauge, then you set your IVA. And on most of the cats, it's 20 thousandths, but check for your particular engine. So if you do, you do your IVAs the same time you do your rocker arm. So you would do the IVA on one, two, and four when you're on compression for one, because that's the same time you're doing the intake valves for one, two, and four. Does that make sense? I hope so. So hopefully this video has uh, showed you how to do your overhead. Now obviously, the C15 overheads can be different between the engine models. Um, CAT changed up their overhead configurations quite a bit between each individual engine model, but the principles are the same. The only difference being SDPs don't use the injector height tool. All they do is get, um, you run the nut down until it contacts the injector, then you turn it 180 additional degrees and you lock the lock nut for an SDP. But all engines, all non-regen C15s use the injector height tool. Hey, did this video help you save time or money? Well, maybe you should consider helping to support the making of these videos. You can reach me through PayPal at adeptape at yahoo.com. Also, I have a Skype account. If you would like a personal consultation, you can leave your email address in the comment section stating that you would like such or email me at adeptape at yahoo.com. All right, thank you and please subscribe.